Welcome to Stonefield Queries Knowledge Center, where we help you take the mystery out of reporting. In today's how-to video, we're going to learn how to create a quick report using Stonefield Query for Sage Timberline Office. In today's lesson, we're going to look at how to create a report using the Quick Reports wizard. By the end of today's lesson, we will have looked at main report information, data selection, standard filter options, sorting options, formatting options, and security options. Let's proceed to today's lesson. Welcome to Stonefield Queries Reports Explorer. When I click on the new button, the report type dialog box comes up. As you can see, there's a variety of different types of reports that I can create. For today's lesson, we're going to be creating a new quick report. Click the OK button to launch the quick reports wizard. Step one is some information about the report. First of all, I'm going to give it a name of my sales report. By default, Stonefield Query will put this into whatever folder you had selected in the Reports Explorer, but of course you can choose a different folder from the drop-down list. I'm going to choose the training folder. Next we choose the module that we want the data to come from. This drop-down menu shows a listing of all the modules that are activated in Timberline. I will choose Accounts Receivable. Comments would be anything you want to see back in the Reports Explorer whenever this report is selected. We'll just put in a simple comment. This is a sales report. Now we can click on the next button to proceed to step two. Step two is the big one. This is where we tell Stonefield Query what should appear in the report. The thing to keep in mind is we're going to tell Stonefield Query what we want and not how to get it from the database as you would have to with other reporting tools. As you are selecting your data, one of the things that you will notice is that we see nice descriptive table and field names. Stonefield Query displays the tables and fields with names that are meaningful, rather than those real table and field names like ARA history, activity. Now let's add some fields to our report. First of all, we're going to go to the customer table and we're going to select the name field. Next, we're going to go back to the activity table and we're going to select three fields from here. The first one is going to be invoice. The second one is going to be invoice date. And the final field that we're going to select is the amount. At any point as you're creating your report, if you want to see what the report will look like, simply hit the preview button. And Stonefield Query will do a live query against your database and show you the results in a preview window. So here are the results showing us the information that we've asked for. However, this report is not organized very well. There does not appear to be any grouping or sorting, and there are no subtotals and so on. Close the preview window, and we'll change a few things. The way you change how a field appears in a report is by double-clicking it or selecting and choosing properties. Either way, you get a properties dialog box that allows you to control how this field appears in the report, grouping options, create links, and add comments to a field. What I'm going to do with the customer name field is go to the grouping page and turn on the option group on this field. By grouping on the customer name, we can see all the invoices for that customer together. To save these changes, choose OK. I am also going to change the properties on the amount field. This column heading is really not very descriptive, so I'm going to change it to something like taxed total. Next we're going to go to the format page. Here I'm going to turn on the option of sum. This is going to tell Stonefield Query that we want to see subtotals at the end of each group break and grand totals at the end of the report. Once again, choose OK. And we'll preview this report. This time, the report is organized the way we'd like it to be. Here are all the invoices for Allstate University, Bill Rickey, and so on. Now, the issue with this report is that it's showing every record in the entire database, which is not something that we typically want. So let's close the preview window and proceed to the next step. Step 3 is filtering. In this report, I'm looking for all invoices from 2001. Let's launch the filter dialog box by selecting the filter button. While I will need to create a filter, let's launch the filter condition dialog box by clicking the add button. In order to set up your filtering conditions, you need to know the table and field in which your data is stored. I already know that the information that I'm looking for is stored in the activity table and is found on the activity type field. Next, choose an operator. 
you will notice that we have nice English expressions for our operators. Equals, does not equal, is greater than, and so on. I'm going to choose the expression equals. From here, we need to select a value. Once again, click the values button. We're going to choose invoice. Select OK to save your filtering condition. When we return to the filter dialog box, we see that we've created our first filtering condition. However, I'm interested in invoices that were created in 2001, so we will need to add a second filtering condition to our report filter. When adding additional conditions, we need to specify how the current condition is connected to the previous condition using an AND or expression. In this case, we're going to leave the default value of AND. Secondly, choose the table and field in which the data is stored. In this case, we're going to choose the activity table and use the activity date field. Then select an operator. Once again, we have a variety of nice English expressions. I'm going to choose is between. That's pretty handy for dates. Now I will enter my date range. I'm going to enter a starting date of January 1st, 2001. And I'm going to enter an ending date range of December 31st, 2001. The next time I run this report, I might be interested in a different date range, so I'm going to choose the Ask at Runtime option. This tells Stonefield Query that I want to be prompted for a date range every time I run this report. If I choose OK, I can now save this filtering condition. From the Quick Reports wizard, we're going to preview this report again. Because I turned on the Ask a Runtime option, Stonefield Query will prompt me for a new date range. We can either accept the default dates or enter new dates, or we can choose to ignore this condition altogether on this particular run. I'm just going to choose OK and accept the default conditions. And here are the results. Let's return to the Quick Reports wizard. The next step is sorting. You can see that this report is initially sorted on the name field. Within the initial sort, we can add additional fields and have multiple levels of sorting. Let's add the invoice date, and then we can choose to have it go in ascending or descending order. Now let's proceed to step five. The next step is formatting. Here you can specify a header and a footer for each page. In the case of orientation, Automatic means that Stonefield Query will automatically change the orientation to landscape if it's too wide for portrait, a nice feature you don't see in other reporting tools. However, if you wanted to, you could force it to a particular orientation. Templates are another nice feature that allow you to control the appearance of a report. We provide you with a template editor so you can modify the template or even create your own custom templates. We also provide you with a number of built-in templates. If I choose a different template, such as Ledger, and run the report again, I have to specify my filtering conditions. This time the report looks different. Now we see gray bands over every second detail line and dark boxes over each group header. Now let's proceed to step six for the remainder of today's lesson. The last step when you're creating a report is security. By default, everyone will have access to the report, but that may not be appropriate for all report types. So we can remove everyone from the list and indicate that only administrators have access to this report. Now that I'm done designing this report, I simply hit the Finish button and the report gets saved to the Reports Explorer. And there is my report ready to run whenever we need it. In today's lesson, we learned how to create a report using the Quick Reports wizard. We learned about the main report information, data selection, standard filter options, sorting options, formatting options, and security options. Thank you for watching today's presentation on Quick Reports.